Hi, Joe O'Connell, Sandpiper Pump. Today we're going to show you how to install a wet end kit into an HDB inch and a half. Out front we have some examples of Sandpiper's genuine parts, wet end kit, air end kit. The rebuild you're going to see is accurate in man method and machine, but for video purposes some parts of the work performed have been condensed in time. At any point during the presentation, please pause this video until you have completed any phase of the process. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and air end kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. Sandpiper Genuine Replacement Parts, Wet End and Air End Kits provide a bill of material of the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Sandpiper recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of kit installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals or more information, visit us on the web at www.sandpiperpump.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warren Rupp video on safety at sandpiperpump.com. The pump we are using in this presentation has been built new and is considerably easier to work with than a pump that has been used in a process. Additional time may be required in the separation and preparation of parts and components during the rebuild. While the pumps are different in size and flow, the techniques and procedures used in the rebuild of the HDB inch and a half are also applied to the commonality of the HDB2 and the HDB3. These are the recommended tools used with the rebuild. While the sizes may change based on the model, the type will remain the same. Torque wrench, ratchet, small slotted screwdriver, o-ring pick, 12 inch pry bars, sockets and or wrenches, 3 8 1 half inch, 9 16 inch, 5 8 inch, 11 16 inch, 3 quarters inch, one and five sixteenths inch six point socket. Let's get started taking the pump apart. We're going to start with taking the manifold off. For video purposes, we're going to use a three eighths inch um, electric impact gun. Uh, we're going to flip the pump up here. On the HDB two and three, you're not going to be able to do this, but we'll go ahead and take the manifold off. Once you have the bolts removed, go ahead and take the manifold and set it aside. We'll come back to that. Take the gaskets off. You can go ahead and discard those. We'll take the outer chamber off on one side. You're going to have two blind holes. You'll want to leave those for last. It'll hold the chamber in place. Turn the unit up on its side there. Take the chamber off. Set it aside. We'll loosen the outer plate here off the diaphragm rod. Remember this on an older unit, it may take some time to get this thing off. It may be a little stuck, but work with it. Pull the plate out. Diaphragm sits in a bead and you may have to reach in and pry it out to get it out, especially with the thermal plastics. You can discard the diaphragm and the wear pad. Take the inner plate, set the bumper and the inner plate aside. And then you can go ahead and take the opposite chamber off now. Set the chamber aside. Remove the diaphragm assembly. Set the bumper aside for use later. We'll take the air valve off next. Take four bolts out.
Now we're going to take the diaphragm rod off. Today we are using a vise with soft jaws. Soft jaws are utilized to ensure that the shaft is not scarred, scratched, or damaged while it's clamped in the vise. Make sure you set the bumper aside. Clamp the rod into the vise. We're going to take the diaphragm assembly off the diaphragm rod. Spin that off and separate the two. You may have to put the inner diaphragm plate into the vise to get it to come apart from the outer plate that is threaded on. You can discard the diaphragm and discard the wear pad. Inspect the diaphragm rod for any scratches, grooves. Replace that if necessary. Open up your wet end kit. Lay your components out. Inspect the inner and outer diaphragm plates. Ensure the plates have no sharp edges or scarring on the radius. Plates can be cleaned up with emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Make sure the radius is maintained during cleanup. Replace if necessary. Go ahead and remove your soft jaws and you want to clamp the inner plate into the vise. You want to make sure you get a hold of the bottom part of the plate and not up on the radius. You want the flat face to face up. We're going to install our diaphragm now. The natural bulge of the diaphragm faces out. So you want to invert the diaphragm. Put your wear pad on. Thread your outer plate in through the assembly. then torque to manufacturer specifications which you can find in your service and operating manual. Yeah. I'm going to do this for both diaphragms. So go ahead again put the inner plate into the vise. Make sure you grab onto the bottom of the plate. Flat face up. Invert the diaphragm. Put the diaphragm on there, put your wear pad on. And then thread your outer plate into the assembly. And torque to manufacturer specifications. I want to go ahead and then clamp the diaphragm rod back into the vise. Make sure you use your soft jaws. You want to thread one of the assemblies onto the rod. And you want to torque it to specifications that are in your service and operating manual. We'll take that assembly out and reinstall it into our HDB inch and a half. Make sure you put the bumper on. Apply a little grease to the diaphragm rod. Slide it through the center. Make sure that you get the diaphragm seated in the receiver bead. Inspect the outer chamber for casting integrity. Inspect the machine faces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. Scarring scratches or material buildup can be cleaned up by using memory paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Port side of the chamber faces in the same direction as your nameplate. You want to install the two blind hold bolts first. Um, this will hold the chamber in place while you install the rest of the bolts. Go ahead and install the rest of the bolts and then tighten them down in a crossing pattern. Go ahead and put the opposite diaphragm assembly on. Make sure you put your bumper on. Thread the assembly on but don't thread it all the way down. I'm going to take a couple of pry bars. You want to get up under the diaphragm and you want to make sure you get under the diaphragm plate. Pull the diaphragm assembly across. Again, make sure you're under the diaphragm plate. 
You can do damage to the diaphragm if you try to pull that assembly across with the pry bar under the diaphragm. You want to invert the diaphragm so that the diaphragm seats into the bead. Make sure you get the diaphragm seated all the way into the bead. And then you can install your outer chamber. Again, inspect the outer chamber. The ported face of the diaphragm chamber goes towards the nameplate. Install the bolts into the two blind holes, hold the chamber in place, and then you can install the rest of the bolts. Tighten all the bolts down in a crossing pattern. Go ahead and install the pilot valve next. Pilot valves come pre-lubed. Pull the pilot valve shaft out, just inspect it, make sure the lube's good. You may want to apply a little more extra lube on there. You have two gaskets. One fits over the pilot valve sleeve and spool. Doesn't matter which direction it goes on, just so long as you get, get it over the spool. The other gasket goes on the back side of the pilot valve. You have to make sure you line up the center port with the pilot hole in the pilot valve. On the main air valve assembly, the pilot hole will have to line up all the way through. Next, you want to push the actuator plungers out of the way. With thermal plastics, you may not be able to get one to push all the way over, but you do have to invert the spool in the pilot valve. You don't want to set the pilot valve spool down on top of the actuator plunger. You'll bend it or break it when tightening it down, so invert the, the spool on the side that the actuator plunger will not push all the way over. Install your pilot valve with your two gaskets. And then we're going to install the main air valve assembly. Again, make sure the pilot hole on the main air valve assembly lines up with the pilot hole in the gasket and the pilot valve. Thread your four bolts in, tighten them down, hand tight. Take our manifold assembly and disassemble it. We're going to take the threaded flanges off first. Move the two bolts on each flange. Take the flange and you can discard the O-ring from underneath. I'm going to do that on the suction and the discharge side. Now we'll take the six cap screws out of the manifold assembly itself. Got the suction flange, a gasket, seat, another gasket, and four check balls on each side. You can discard the gaskets and the check balls. We want to inspect the manifold for scarring damage or material buildup. 
Check the casting for wear. Check the port for thread integrity. Repair or replace as needed. Emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper can be used to clean the manifold up. The manifold has no up or down. It can be placed either way. You want to set it down on a flat surface and then inspect your flanges. I also want to inspect your seats. Check the pens in the seats. Make sure they're tight. Any loose pens or any straps on the seats, you need to replace the seat. Take two check balls, set them in the pens in the seat. Set a gasket down there. It'll line up. Place that into your flange. Set that assembly aside. On the suction seat, you want to check the pens again. Set your gasket down. Two check balls. You want to place that into the manifold. Take another gasket, line it up. And this is the suction side, so you take your suction side flange. It's marked with the N. You want to put that up against the manifold. The face of the flange, the porting face of the flange needs to face upward. And we want to take our discharge assembly, put your gasket on, line it up on the opposite side. And it needs to face up. You should be able to read the word out and in on the flanges. Install a couple of cap screws just to hold the assembly together. And then you can go ahead and put the rest of the cap screws on and tighten in a crossing pattern. We'll reinstall our threaded flanges, take the O-rings, Work them into the groove. Make sure they're securely into the O-ring receiver groove. Take your two bolts. Tighten them down. Either flange will fit on either side. You can do that for both sides. You want to install the gaskets on the ports of the outer chambers. We'll set our manifold assembly up. Make sure that you have the suction and discharge ports in the right direction. In and out, marked respectively. And the suction side needs to be on the bottom. We want to take our retainer wedge the entry face of the wedge needs to be pointed towards the chamber. Install our nuts. These are lock nuts. You want to do this in a crossing pattern. That completes our wet side rebuild of our HTB inch and a half. Our rebuild included check balls, diaphragms, ceiling rings, gaskets, O-rings. If doing a complete rebuild, also see our video on air side rebuild.
Or for additional information, find us on the web at sandpiperpump.com or contact after sale support at service.warnerup at idexcorp.com. Thank you.